Hey, ESLO? Uh, yes, this is ESLO. Is this Kieran Murphy? Yeah, speaking. How's it going? It's not going well, but I mean, you know that. Yeah, I can see, obviously, the chain of emails. There's lots of stuff going on um, at the moment. But like I said before, I'm well, trying to engage it to see what we can progress. And some things I can progress, some things I cannot progress. Um, I do think there's some things have to go to GSOC because I'm not in a position to... Oh, I mean, I, I've already gone to GSOC, and I've already put that in the, in, in the correspondence, which I'm very, I've been very open with everybody. I, I've been not in, in, in any um, aspect of, of what I've done. Um, okay. I went what to can, G I, can I specifically do, that's what I said? Um, I don't know, because, I mean, I don't know what your remit is, because, I mean, the last time we, we argued, it was over what, what's going on with the bribe bill. And okay. uh, for whatever, I don't even know what exactly wh wh why the bribe bill decided to be obstinate. I mean, I was recommended to go by them, by both GSOC and by uh, Michael Hanahoe, due to the difficulties, the ongoing and constant difficulties I've had with, with Kevin Street at, at, at every level. You tell me I can report a, a, a crime or, or, or uh, anything. Um, the wider colleagues uh, at, at Kevin Street have made um, my uh, interaction with the law impossible, and yet I still phone in uh, issues that I believe would both help, well, people and the guards at large, whether it's domestics on the street, stabbings or anything, you know? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, up until as of recently, as of only two weeks ago. So it's never really stopped. So I'm still, I still interact with the guards, so I don't have like a complete lack of respect yeah. for, the, for, the, for the function. Before running through the, the, the contents of what, what you're hoping I might be able to address, how is your physical condition at the minute? It's pretty shit. I mean, this isn't the first hunger strike. Um, but, you know, uh, I would imagine actually after the last, the last one, which Kevin Street just ignored and let me go. I mean, to be fair, between you and me, and we can pass this on, the only reason the last hunger strike, the one that went for 90 days, stopped was my friend accidentally left me on, on Skype with her autistic child. In, in in Australia, and he's I she she went to bed. She forgot she t before I called. She just in 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 between me calling and everything. She forgot she taken a sleeping pill. You know, uh, you know, she was on her way to bed, and I, I my call was unexpected, so I distracted it, and then she just literally fell asleep. So she left me on on Skype with her six year old autistic child who um, pulled her computer around so I could watch him in the kitchen. So I sat for two and a half hours watching this child in Tasmania, biting my nails, wondering was he going to damage himself looking up emergency numbers but um the entire time he, uh, I, I spent I, di I just spent with this child uh, telling me uh, why don't you eat him mr skeleton why don't you sleep mr skeleton and that sort of had a, that had a wearing effect on me after a few days a few days after that i i was convinced to uh, by a group of people who said it helped me to stop that with that hunger strike and i wouldn't have stopped that one but i had reached okay. skeletal levels with that one but so i think this one you know and this is a third or a third or fourth one um, you know, I think my body's a bit inured to it. So this one is uh, that the weight loss is slower than, say, the last one where it was extremely rapid compared to all the others. Within, I'd say, the first 10 days of the last one, before it plateaued, I lost uh, 12 kilos. Whereas wow. this, whereas this one, I this one is all over the place, and I don't know whether that's a sign that the body is just damaged and it's water retention because it it'll, it'll jump up and down anywhere between four to five kilos of course a day which obviously is not normal so it has to be water retention okay. and it's very and this one's a lot more painful um like far if this was what the first one was like i would never have done another one but this is because this one is 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 wow painful and that's when my body's worn out doing this i mean uh, you know can i can i ask should you not be going to a hospital at this point for treatment? No, no. I, I, why, why would I be doing that? My, my life is, uh, is pretty much over. I mean, you know, I have a, you know, d like to, 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 and I know you've probably seen it in correspondence. I think Bobby Sam said it. Under well, the weight of oppression and corruption, when you have nothing, the body is the weapon. I think he, he said, and the path to freedom, but I'm going to say, or the path to freedom. I've 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 had a I've had a miserable time with your colleagues. And okay, uh, I get that. You know, I mean, I know from the correspondence I can see very clearly how that has impacted on me. I think.
something that's dreadful with that tail. It was erupted before so, some manners are before the court in, in different aspects and that's that's where they are. Yeah, I know that. I, well, I've told the court, and, and I don't, and I, I'm assuming that you've probably, since you have access to my file, you've probably seen the court correspondence. I told, I told the court that I won't be eating, yeah. um, and that I've taken that stand. That I, I, in light of, in light of, and you know, this goes back to what I said in correspondence with you. Um, in light of the guards refusing to to interact with me, I, I mean, you know, in any level, uh, the document requests, cutting me off from my creative career. Any, any number of things, um, but mostly at the moment, in light of five false affidavits, that uh, you know, I can't, I can't feasibly acknowledge is this, that. Is this the the court case that Brian Gillen has taken specifically, or is it more than is not as well as that? No, it's it's Gillen specifically. Okay, so I mean, I know just going through your email that you have a disclosure pack given to you from the state solicitor in that case i have only got the book of evidence and and um i'm requi i'm requesting more documentation because i don't there's, there's things missing from the book of evidence i mean i, okay. I, I, I and like who, who have you written to to get that i'm i'm writing to you because you said you it was to interact with you because every request i have ever put in um to the to the guardian has been ignored and, and that's how things have got to this level of, of, of harsh and aggravated. You know, I mean, the, uh, I think at the point when Kevin Street decided I couldn't celebrate Christmas was things went, things probably crossed the bridge too far. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you're, you're referring, referring to there. Oh, oh, this is where, I, like when I got out, what, what, okay, so, so I got, I got, I got sectioned for 21 days off the back of the um, uh, anonymously phoned in mental health check that turned into an armed response raid. This, this was the arrest? This was the, f this was the initial arrest in 2018. Yes. Yeah, and I was sh I should have been uh, in section for 21 days, up for review as it is, and I yeah. uh, I got out in under 12 days, or just about 12 days, because, okay. I w because the guards, and it would look like some GP and there's possibly a family member involved. Um, I told the hospital that my time in Finland, my time living in Finland, and events in Finland, were all a hallucination and a delusion that never happened. Okay. Um, and uh, I was able to secure documentation and prove to the hospital that that had all happened. So I was released. Okay. Uh, and I got out to find the guards who confiscated my phones. This, this is the phones were taken in 2018. Yeah. Okay, so the two phones that you, you've been referring to in, in the cards coming to me are the two phones taken in 2018. Yes. Okay. And I, um, originally I had a mental health solicitor who was very disturbed by the fact that the guards would confiscate things um, on, an, on a mental health uh, thing because there's no remit for that, I even with if there's an arm response rate in it. Uh, but um, she faded off, as you know how flaky solicitors can be. Um, and uh, I was left in a situation where um, the phones contain all my security codes for all my work, websites, my DNS, everything. So okay. I, was, I was completely cut off from my creative career. Okay. Uh, and I this I is... Sorry, managed to recover any of your material back since 2018? I've only recovered a couple of emails. I'm still locked out of accounts. And I have been, and I've told the guards this. And additionally, that it was my only source of all my contacts. And um, so if I got out in around the 11th or 12th, the 12th, I think, of September, uh, I had, at the 12th of September, I had five phone numbers left. And... Uh, by by uh, December, I had I had earlier that year, um, I had been asked, did I want to just as a break from all the stuff in Finland, um, did I want to spend Christmas in Prague with my ex girlfriend and her boyfriend and her family, and I I had said I would, and I emailed Kevin Street, and I asked him, could I, at the very least, gain access to my phones, 
um, to get both my security codes, you know, oh, and um, this phone number so I could celebrate Christmas. And Kevin, yeah. Kevin Street ignored me. And over the course of this time, I had many phone calls with Kevin Street, all of which are recorded, with Kevin Street Gardy, sometimes with, with amusement in their voices, con constantly changing the reason they had confiscated my phones. Okay, so as far as I can see, and I'm just on the computer here beside you while, you, while I'm talking to you, is I have one mobile phone, Samsung Galaxy 5 Black. It has two uh, phones. One phone, and I have a second phone, a mobile phone, iPhone 5S, silver. Yeah. Those are two phones we're, we're discussing. Those are two phones you're looking for? It, I don't know if it's an iPhone. It shouldn't, I don't know if it's a 5. I think it should be like an 8. I'll have to check that. Um, well, on, on, on the, the record here, it's a certainly a second a phone. Yeah. So you've got one Samsung and one iPhone. Yeah, those are the two. Okay, so they are on the system here as being seized and being in our possession. So they are. Yeah, and um, I have sought constantly. And I mean, uh, like... At one point, and I don't know who in the station put Blotine up to it, but I had Blotine tell me that um, one of the times, because she changed it now several times on the phone, uh, that my phones were being held as part of an investigation into my cyber stalking. Now, I um, pointed out to Blotine that that, that was a... Now, just pardon my language, because this is me speaking freely. That was some psychic Sherlock Holmes-level shit, because uh, I had never reported my phones being um, beside not my, my cyber stalking in Ireland. I had made one attempt to speak with the Gardaí cyber division and met someone in Kevin Street who basically told me to turn off my computer. Now, I have outspoken to law enforcement in several countries. I have outstanding legal cases that the Gardaí's actions with my phones has actually hampered. I underwent five, no, it's actually now it's up to seven and a half years of people inciting suicide, telling me they were going to murder me, uh, threatening violence, hacking me, claiming that they called in the Guardi SWAT, telling me they're telling, claiming they would call in another one. Um, I have had work destroyed. Uh, uh, it's like it's been fairly constant, and it's part of it. Part of it's due to being a performer. It's not like. It's not like it's due to some political activity. Um, okay, so well, listen, just, just, just for a second, just on the phones then. The two phones are here in Kevin Street. That, that's what the, the computer is telling me here now, looking at us. It's a Samsung and it's an iPhone. I'm just sending a message to Brian to confirm that those phones are subject of a criminal investigation or not, and can they be confirmed, returned to you, sorry. So you come back to me in relation to that. Um, I will chase it up and I will come back to you in the next couple of days. But the problem with this is is that this, there was already a property order that went through court okay. regarding this. And Gillen refused to turn up to court. You you took the police property application, yeah. is that correct? And then okay. I, dr I dropped it I, 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 on about the fourth appointment. Because I, I dropped it I dropped it after the okay. after the second raid. And I went into court representing myself. And I said to the judge that I was dropping the uh, possessions order or the property order. Um okay. Due to guard, I stated this three times in court. Due to guardy intimidation and violence. Okay, so in terms of the phones and trying to address the issue of the phones, um, I'm going to talk to Brian. I'm going to identify. One, it, well, it's got to be one of two things: either the phones are not subject to the criminal investigation and can be returned, or the phones are subject to the criminal investigation. At which point, then. Um, well, it'd be curious if they were, because Brian didn't even know they'd been confiscated the first time he was asked about them, because I sent someone in to talk to them, and he didn't know they were there. Yeah. So that's so on record. And then, you know, Brian hasn't included them in the book of evidence. So I fail to see how they can be part of a criminal investigation if they're not in the book of evidence. Yes, I, I would agree. So let, let me bottom that out with Brian. His unit is coming back. Um, I think they're back tomorrow is their first day back so over the next four days Brian will be working and I'll be able to get an answer on that from him um, and I'll be able to come back to you at the end of the four days and confirm that either way but if, if they're subject to the criminal investigation then they're subject to that and you can 
you, you'll have to wait through the court process to get that. Well, as I am, as the court now has told me, I'm representing myself. Okay. Then I, I'm um, going to have to. The guardian is going to have to start interacting with me, but like a bit better on paperwork yeah. because you know, this, this, um, the, the as as is, I'm I'm applying to have this struck out based on 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 how the guardian has acted. That's okay. And I just the, just the let the me the know. The other side of the phones issue then is if the phones are not subject to the criminal investigation, then I will see that they're uh, sorted out and returned to you. I will do that. Yeah. Okay. So so in the next four days. I'll be able to establish and come back to you and I will tell you whether they're subject to the criminal investigation and what their role is in that or I will be able to identify that they're not subject to the criminal investigation and look to get them returned to you and I will deal with that. At this point though, just just, just, with, just as a question to you, um, you know, if, if he decides suddenly they are, as, as um, I'm just going to speak frankly about A168, about Brian. Yeah. I'm just, be, uh, you know, I believe that he's a very damaged sadist. He, okay. he, 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 he tightened my handcuffs until he fractured my wrists. Okay. Um, and, and, my, and that's uh, subject something that you've dealt with through GSOC. It's not dealt with with GSOC. It's not finished. I'm not finished with that by a long shot. No, but but you're you are dealing with that in a separate forum. Um, I assume that Gillen has contacts in GSOC and friends because um, GSOC. Uh, derailed my investigation into Gillen um, to make t to make it about my child abuse. So I have a separate suit against GSOC now, um, specifically against the GSOC operative there by the name of Gary Russell, who I'm in the, pro uh, in the process is suing. Okay. Um, because he abused okay. access to privileged medical information. Okay. So, uh, if, so you if you can tell me, uh, uh, like, just how in any scope the action, as you know, as it described, uh, began as mental health. The, the petrol the was in the, there was a canister of petrol, however, it was never poured or anything. How, 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 what you have, as it described, in any way could have anything to do with my child abuse? Well, I, again, I, I have no idea. See, I, I don't either. It'd be sort of like me trying to blame, you know, I don't know, you, you know, yeah. you, you driving well, home with a hangover on, on, on like, a coach, football coach, that was mean to you when you were twelve. You know, it's it's, it's not yeah. not not the way life works. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen. In terms of what what I can and what I can't do is, the court case is before the court, obviously. So you have the book of evidence. You're looking for more material that's not contained in the book of evidence. Well, okay. So, what on you do in that regard. Did I am no worries. No worries. How's it going? I'm just on the phone to someone. Is there something going on? No. Okay. Give me, give me a few minutes. I'll give it back to you. Running quick. All right. Thanks. Okay. So I'm back there now. No worries. Um, so listen, just in terms of the the court case, if you're trying to get more material, obviously, um, where the DCC is involved in the disclosure, they should have given you details or you should have details from someone as to who you can write to to ask for further information in disclosure so writing to let's say superintendent kevin street probably isn't a direct forum it's probably just chief state solicitor's office that are running that investigation and whichever chief states persons so in the disclosure pack do you have contact details for um no not really i just i just have the name of the prosecutor and the dpp have been um and who, who is your prosecutor the, the helena kiley and um, you know, I, I I currently have a complaint up with the ombudsman of, um, uh, regarding the DPP due to the fact that, and also this is is will be one having to go regarding the Kevin Street access officer because you know two years ago I contacted your access officer and told them I was disabled, and that I wished okay. I wished to speak to them um, as I would have believed that the the disability I do have would make um. You know, I would need them sort of communicated better to Kevin Street. Um, and uh, they just ignored me. In fact, I think I spoke with one access officer somewhere in the guards once, and they sort of uh, put me on hold and hung up. So but like uh, the access officer would provide you with access to which side? Well, the a an, an access officer under the Disability Act is supposed to, um, you know, in, uh, in part at times, 
act as a communication liaison um, for people with specific disabilities. Now, I would have very bad PTSD, which is greatly yeah. exacerbated by the raid yeah. and, and subsequent harassment stuff. Like, you know, for the first few weeks, whenever I, I was out, when I was out of hospital, um, I'm not saying with every car, just a certain cars from around the Kevin Street area of, uh, of Gardaí cars would pull up and drive really slowly beside me and or I would meet people who uh, were local to the area who would uh, say they'd met Br Gillen and uh, he'd, they'd been talking about me and stuff you know okay. it was it was quite it was quite oppressive okay so uh, oh. you know I, I wanted I wanted to speak to the access officer regarding communicating properly to to Kevin Street the the nature of PT PTSD and also the ADHD which the ADHD like I have to in talking with you, I have to simultaneously have a have a notepad, yeah. um, a cigarette always burning, um, and um, something else I can fidget with. And these are all like um, tools to keep me from scattering too much and, and going off on tangents. And you probably know that I will tangent because it's just yeah, the nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so go, going back to Helena Kylie, so if if she's down as your prosecutor and you have reference numbers from the DPP's office you should be writing to to that office and her looking for the additional disclosure that you're doing at Kevin Street wouldn't be the appropriate um, okay. avenue to get that information it would be through the chief state's office yeah you and see what they, they, will, they will do then is they'll send that back down through the channel uh, to Garda Gillen asking for that information whether it's available and of course it's all in writing they'll get a response and it'll go back through and be brought back through in the court if you'd, you it that way. if you'd believe me in this and I, and I can I can send you um, photos of my book of evidence I didn't have my case number until late December okay um, and I don't know what all I had all I ever had was the charge sheet number okay but even on the book of evidence I have it now but I didn't have it for all that time and I'd asked for it a few times I never, I okay. never, you know. Okay, so so in terms of the additional disclosure material, that could go to that case number to the chief prosecutor at the address on your on your file, whether it's the DPP's office or, or if it's the chief state's office, then Chip Street, whichever one is on your file, quoting that reference number and listing out as simply as you can this, it, that as many whatever content details you're looking for, and they will then get that and they have to address it, they'll have to send it through this, through their superiors, through the chain of command, let's say, around, and it will eventually come back to the station here, where they'll have to answer that and bring it back through the channels back. And at that point, you're able to argue the fact that you either did or didn't get an answer on the disclosure in front of a judge, and the judge will understand the process, and he'll accept that process, that you asked for additional disclosure, and it was or was not granted and they can seek explanations from the other side and again it's, a, it's an open and a transparent way of dealing with that issue it would be really good it just you could probably recommend this to the powers that be that they had like a little pdf pamphlet that if someone in the future says in correspondence that they are representing themselves that the guards don't continue the refrain of speak to your solicitor and that they just go and just you know I mean, it may yeah. seem rude to the person, but if they just email this yeah. little PDF with the, basically the information they need, I mean, that would have helped because no one gives that. Because I, sp I, I, I spoke with the, the DPP quite a number of times. Actually, okay. actually, I'd say I'd say so many times that they're probably sick of hearing from me, and they yes. and they wouldn't tell me that. And um, you know. Well, I do think if you if you're specific to your case number, if your court case, and your queries are specific to you're looking for additional disclosure. And you keep it as, as simple as you can in terms of doing that. Um, in terms of just bullet pointing that you're in front of the court, you're representing yourself. These are the additional items of disclosure that you think are available but have not been received by you. And you're looking for clarification from them um, for that to be provided or an answer as to why it's not available. And then that can go off in writing to them and they'll have to deal with that. And of course, then you're able to bring that up in front of the court and discuss it with the judge in terms of a specific disclosure issue. Yeah, oh, well, okay, I'll do that. Thanks Thanks for that direction, because, uh, you know, that is, that is the intent on the ground. Yeah, um, okay. No one, no one really gives information.
sure I didn't okay. I didn't find out I didn't find out that I was supposed to give the court a sick letter for the first court date that I missed due to until two months later when actually uh, the head clerk of the Department of Justice criminal justice uh, told me that and was told me then when she told me that that that, that, that Parkgate Street clerks should have told me that they should have done yes, and, and I got there no one said and then, and then I had a small like row with her over the fact that she believed that they had told me and I and then I had to forward her the email thread and she was like to phone me back and go okay sorry about that but you should have been told if for any reason that you can't attend court or you're going to be late or you're sick if there's any any particular issue that's stopping you attending court I would recommend that you would write to the um, court clerk the court cases up in front of us because you should have that information. Oh, I do. I've, 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 I've a long, I've, 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 I've yeah. quite, quite a lot of communication with the court clerks now. They're quite, yeah. they're quite, so they're I quite aware of me now. Yeah, I'd be writing to them. The chief states that is that lady Helen Kiley and the guard. Yeah, so I would be doing it from three different avenues so that no one can say they're not involved or not aware. And whatever your reason is going, that you're able to apply properly for a remand or adjournment or it to be dealt with in your absence or wh whichever the, um, position is going to be yeah yes okay well that, that, thank you for that i appreciate that that, that that's very useful thank you well, um, that's, that's just just going through your email so in terms of the phones i, I it'll take me next, the next four days probably to get to the bottom of where they are and what their position is we'll deal with that and in terms of your disclosure issue with the court case um you you know to talk to helen kiley and you're going to do that so and that will deal with the, all the disclosure and other materials in, in terms of the actions of the guards on the night when they went in with the EOU, that's still a matter for GSOC. Um, oh yeah, I know, and and actually, I, I'm just, I am just going to have to, um, you're going to, going to have to talk to someone because I am just literally going to, um, and I don't mean this in a bulky way or anything, but I am yeah. going to systematically sue every individual guard that was in my home on the second raid. Okay. Um so and 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 and. The that that's just the second raid. But go, uh, we were talking about the first raid. Um, there are points of that. Since you see, this is this is a, this is the problematic point. The action was taken under the Mental Health Act. Yes, I, I am aware of that. Yeah. Now, in the affidavit, uh, where is it? I have to see what I should have it beside me. In the affidavit, G Gillen says, uh, "This is the, you know in in." in in part of the things that Gillen has lied about, um, Gillen says that he um, met me outside my. Uh, where is it? Uh, I returned to the floor and I um, met Mr. Madden outside the door of his apartment. Now that never happened. Okay. Okay. I I, I met I met a, a man with a, uh, a machine gun raised to my face. And I was escorted by uh, ERU unit to the landing with my elevator. And where there was uh, two EMTs. And nice. I went down the elevator with two uh, ERU uh, unit members, one short one, one tall one. Tall one has uh, probably got ginger hair and freckles because he has freckles under his mask. Um, and. Uh, you know, um, at one point, I, the, the lift is memorable because at one point the short one um, went to pull his gun on me. I'm not sure whether he was going to pistol whip me or not. Um, uh, because I told him he was shit at negotiating. Now, I don't know whether part of all of this is that Gillen is actually a member of the ERU and has forgotten, or I mean, that's being obfuscated. So I'll allow wiggle room there. But he but definitely is not a member of the ERU. Okay, so then it's nearly nearly impossible um, for Gillen to have been at my front door uh, when I was escorted out. Okay, but this is subject of, of, of the court proceedings. Yeah, no, 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 it's just, I'm just, this is, this is just the point I, I want to make, wider point. Now, okay. I didn't meet Gillen again until the ambulance. So, you know, the, the, the and where in the ambulance I was arrested directly under the Mental Health Act. Yeah. Okay. And then I wasn't re-arrested until approximately around three or four in the morning in Kevin Street, 
where Gillen, after some, and I really not, I'm actually underselling it, after some quite vindictive theatre, uh, Gillen released me under the mental health act and left me in, in on my own at the charges window in Kevin Street for uh, a while and then um, um, came back uh, from behind me actually I remember to charge me with um, quite a number of offences okay. none of which I have charge sheets for none of which are related to the charges that Gillen says that he charged me for on the night and in the book of evidence it says and I'm, this there, I'm getting to the point of why this, this is muddy the book, no, no, of, the book of right. evidence it says that the charges are the same as the charges on the night but the charges on the night reference in the book of evidence or the document reference shows just one charge however the, the book of evidence has two charges now my action under the mental health act transforms at that point at about five in the morning or something or six in the morning when they charge me again um, or when they say they charge me because they never gave me charge sheets or observed my arrest warrant what rights um, into something additional to a mental health act however there's some parallel with the mental health act here because I still want information as to what happened to parts of my apartment that's okay you know, I, I, I'm aware that the Guardi granted access to estranged family members, I, I think, that I have I have issue with. And now, I, do, I don't think, th like, just to give you a small example, I don't think the Guardi would steal my toaster. But, uh, well, yeah, I wouldn't see why. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I, like, you know, th like, that's like, but I've just given an example of things that are missing. However, um, when I spoke to the guards immediately after my release in September of the same year, I think I spoke to some sergeant who was attached to it, or, or killing a sergeant or something, I can't remember. I'd have to go back to the phone calls. I was told that, because um, I'd been told by a strange family, as you can gather, I have some long standing issue with, with certain members yes. of my family. Yes, you referenced that before. Yeah, um, and uh, I had been told by that family member that uh, the guards had ordered the place to be decontaminated and uh, that they'd uh, also ordered the couch to be destroyed. Now, when I phoned Kevin Street through September, October, November, December of 2018, I was repeatedly told that the Guardi didn't, did, did no such thing as they had no authority to do so. And okay. now, you, in your email, you tell me that the couch, you, you, you will understand that the couch is covered in petrol. But yeah, I still have no, I still have no paperwork for that. There's nothing about it in the affidavit, so okay. I'm assuming that that then is decided by the guards not to be part of of what Gillen's criminal thing. So it's part of the Mental Health Act. So I still, that's not covered by the DPP. So we still have a point where I need paperwork for that. Okay. I need I need explanation of what was decontaminated or what was what was not. I have out requested this. So these are, I mean, this is simple humane stuff. Because whatever the guards that the EOU sprayed in my apartment, now I, I know that of the EOU units, one of them, one of the ones in attendance also uses one a CN or a CS based phone or something. Yeah. But, um, and one of them uses the, the pepper spray. That pepper spray is supposed to dissipate in, in about four to five hours, 12 at the most. Um, when I tried to clean or decontaminate residue from what the guards had sprayed in January, it was still reactive. So that's okay. not pepper spray. So um, the date that we're talking about now, this is this is 2018, or yes, this, this is, is 2018. Okay. So so I, you know this entire time I have just asked out of you think you know good basic humanity. To for for decontamination information, he, he, and and which apparently is covered by the law, that the guard is supposed to tell me exactly how to clean, whatever is left residue. When I went to clean the residue that was left on one of the tables, and I sprayed like really basic household stuff on it, it started to smoke and give off like a, 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 a 
sort of a dirty cigarette smoke and I, and I had one friend helping me and I had to literally shove them out of the room. Another friend spilt um, spilt water um, where I'd say the bulk of, of the garden would have sprayed where around where I was or something and uh, that reacted and uh, two people in the room at a time passed out. Uh, so I don't know whether you know I mean whether can I make a suggestion yeah um, if, uh, did you did you um, put in for refunds for the cost of the couch and those items damaged in the course of that incident I was told um, that I couldn't okay I was uh, GSOC uh, who were very unhelpful uh, I was informed that I had to go to Victims of Crime and then the, and, and the, the State Compensation Board. The Victims yeah, of Crime lady... We would refer, yeah, we, we would refer people to the, the State Claims Agency. So, for example, if, if I have a mental health case that we have to access a house and we have to break in the front door, then the um, damage to the door cost of repairing it is recoverable through the state claims agency because the guards damaged the door in the course of their job Do you know yeah when so I when I spoke to both of them I was told that um, the most aggressive the more aggressive of the one was the victim of crime one um, because the state claims lady directed me to the victims of crime one I was told that I would have to win in court against the guardie uh, or I was eligible for nothing and uh, that they couldn't help me and then when I, and she said I could if I wanted to I could try the, the victims of crime so I tried the victims of crime as, as uh, also directed by GSOC and the victims of crime lady um, got uh, very aggressive and uh, okay. accused me of being a spoofer and stuff and how can you be a victim of crime if it was the guardy and I'm like I don't know I'm just phoning you because I was directed to do that and uh, so for the two years now, I have been told repeatedly that I cannot claim back for the, the items that were destroyed by the guy. Uh, is that from the state claims agency specifically? I'll phone them again, but I, I did, uh, like the last time I spoke to them was in, it was, I'd say, the beginning of 2019, and by that I mean, like, really the first two weeks of January, because uh, yeah. I, I, I was really quite fastidious in following up on everything. Yeah, and even, even to be honest, you know, if, if I, let's say, that's a non-crime incident, going in, breaking in a door because there's a health issue. Um, it can be claimed back against the, the state. But also, if I was to go in with a warrant and search a house, and we break the door going in to search the house, then the people who own that house are entitled to back through the state claims agency because the guard used an authority to break in to carry out that function that they were going to look for. They would be entitled to that. It's not a matter of whether the court case was successful or unsuccessful. The fact that that action is taken by the guard at that point in time allows for us. That's that's my experience and understanding of the state claims agency. I'm actually very. Um, yeah, I that. had a, I had a very awful time with them, and then but not as bad as the as the victims of crime people who I got for some reason got directed to, and uh, the state claims people basically told me I was eligible for nothing. Because okay. if I was, if so if if I wa if I had been eligible, you know, a lot of things would be different. Because one of the things that did happen is whatever guards were here, they sprayed um, um, and I and this is all I have, and I'm just literally quoting the the repair uh, breakdowns. I'm not making this up. Is uh, say my speakers, my studio yeah. monitors. Uh, the the write up for them is caustic substance sprayed directly into speakers. Uh, laptops is caustic substance sprayed directly down onto laptops so okay. so they pepper sprayed my equipment which was at the other end of the room away from me okay well I think if, even if they hadn't been intentionally spray, spraying those items if they sprayed it in the room at all it would have landed on those items um, oh no it was um, with the laptops Apple laptops have uh, little sensors all all darted across the, the, the motherboard and um, they're these little squares, and if they if they have exposed to a chemical or water, they turn red. Right. Um, okay. So uh, every single sensor on the board 
was was tripped to which the guy said the only the only only way to do this is for it to have like you know this isn't like ambient exposure like or misting or something he said this is the full yeah. dousing and that's there's photos of that and that's written up as well no it was all very deliberate okay well listen if if you want and if it's acceptable to you i can separately go to the state claims agency and inquire of them in these circumstances would there be uh and would there be compensation available to you with regards with Dean? Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. I, I'd say they're probably going to deny the call because I, I, I had um, I had a, a bizarre time with them. Okay. You know, like um, I, 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 me- I remember at one point, like reading back to the, I, I don't know whether the person was just having an off time and was just deciding to, you know, mess with me. I, I remember at one point reading the website back to them, or like the sort of the pamphlet I had. Yeah. And being told. Well, if you want, if you want, I can try and have a chat with them. If you want to, I, I, I'm open to anything because, like, you know, um, I lost, as a rough guess, just the laptops around five and a half thousand euros worth of laptops. Wow. And um. Well, listen, the phone call doesn't cost me anything except just a little bit of time. So yeah, if you want to, because I mean, the the speakers alone. I mean, I had to. I had to contact the Finnish company who make my who made my speakers, and I had to explain what had happened. And yeah. for that, I was able to get the parts for free because they felt bad for me. But I still had to pay the Irish company for repairs. Okay. Um. And uh, but you know the archives of all the creative work are, are mostly scrambled, but they were spread too. So I lost and decades you, of work. And do you have uh, all the receipts and the costs? I'm sure you probably do. Yeah, I do. I have everything backed up because it was okay. all part of the GSOC investigation. Well, listen, leave leave that with with me again so um i think in terms of trying to make some progress w- we are making a little bit of progress yeah so I, I like if you you know if you leave me the, the next four days and i'll go look for the phones like i said the lads are starting back tomorrow from brian gillen's unit he should be back tomorrow i should be able to bottom out uh what the position is with the phones and if they're not part of the criminal investigation i can get them returned to you that won't be a problem um in terms of the, the extra disclosure I know, I know now what I have to do, so I'll do that. Uh, yeah, thank you for that for clarifying that. But yeah, at the same time, the um, I think the what the matter with the apartment it it it, it straddles the mental health act, so it's it's a grey area. Yeah, but see, we did we did multiple um, house forcing the door for the mental health act with people who are let's say Dublin City Council tenants, you know, and. Normally, if there's damage to the door, the tenant has to replace it. And in such circumstances where, let's say, the guards have pushed the door in on a health ground, on a mental health ground, then they don't have to. They just get a letter from the guards to state it's our responsibility for doing it, and the Dublin City Council will proceed onwards. And as I said, where the guards are carrying out a function, a legal function in terms of um, safety, health and safety, or a criminal investigation, and they break into the place. My experience over my career to date has always been the state claims agency will refund the cost of damages caused um, so listen leave that with me and I will it could that be out. because that um, it could be that uh, she was telling me that I wasn't eligible for anything because subsequent to the mental health act charges arose yeah I, wouldn't, I don't really see why any of that should be a big problem but I guess I better talk to someone in that agency and see why it's an issue so that it's clear and what your regret or possible redress could be to get refunded the cost of her damage. As, as I understood, what I was told was I had to, and I quote, win in court against the guards, and then I can sue the guards. I mean, I also, my house was insured at the time, and my insurer refused to give me any insurance um, due to the because fact... Because the guards had done it. Because the guards had done it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, listen, let, let, let me just work on those couple of things for the next four days, and then I'll be in touch with you then after that, and we'll see what else we need yeah. to do. As I, 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 do, I do, as the laptop, oh, sorry, as the couch and stuff falls under, um, straddles the Mental Health Act, I do I do want the, the information on that, 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 to clarify that. Yeah. And also to clarify who was given access to my apartment. Okay. Um because uh you know i've heard varying stories about things there's things missing there was medication stolen um all sorts okay 
okay? Mm. And yeah, so who who had access afterwards? Yeah, uh, sp- specifically in what was said to them, because, you know, as you can gather, I have a very strange relationship with with, with, with family, specific to really due to one very abusive parent, um, and very much. Uh, I'm trying to think of a, a pop culture reference. It's very much like. Th- um, I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, one of those really uh, weirdly, evilly manipulative people in a sitcom or something, you know, when then okay. they're doing all the stuff behind the scenes or something. I'm trying to think of a movie where you might see that in, but um, there's probably something. Uh, so I, I have someone like that in my life. And, okay. um, you know, they're telling me that the guards gave all these orders and the guards have told me repeatedly on record that they did no such thing. And I need to clarify that because, you know, on one hand, if you've got someone using the guards and basically slandering the guards to use them as a, as a sort of a tool of, of coercive control, which is, uh, as far as I'm aware, is, 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 a, is a law at the moment, even if it doesn't cover parents directly until I take that case. Um, but uh, at the same time, it, it, that that would be concerning because, yes. you know, there would have been someone co-opting what the guards had done to, to, but to abuse. And if they were given misinformation and the guards had, you know, at no, at, 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 at no point have the guards until you sh- until your email when you said well, I poured petrol on the couch at no point up until now had the guards um, uh, verified anything that that parent had said um, they literally denied it and said they didn't have the authority and they didn't do those things and they don't know where I heard that ok well, listen I think that's probably enough to, to go on to see what I can get progress okay. over the next few days and I'll come back to you after that I'll give you I'll give, send you an email and we'll arrange to to pick up the phone and progress things okay. further. And if you do want clarity on what happened at the Bridewell regarding that the abuse case, I can give it to you. Okay, we, well we'll see. We'll yeah. see how we go. Let, let's just do let's do these bits first and um, like I said, build up the trust a little bit. Okay. By me doing what I said I'm going to do, that kind of stuff, and then we'll take it from there. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Right. Have a good evening. Take, Thank you. Have Bye. a good evening yourself too. Take Bye. care, God bless now. Bye bye.